I've heard a lot of bad things about the the new Rogue, and I haven't watched the 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 video on it yet. But I'm really hoping that all of the bad things I heard um, was just people overreacting. The the Rogue was one of my favorite classes, um, second only to the Bard. So I'm really hoping they didn't make the Rogue near unplayable like a lot of people are complaining about on Reddit. So let's go ahead and jump right on into this. Our main job with the Rogue was to not mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it is... It was very sound. It is such a beloved, solid class mm -hmm. that our main goal with the Rogue was to take those really wonderful pieces of design and add some new twists. And so in addition to giving the Rogue Weapon Mastery, as we have several of our other classes, and Weapon Mastery, as you and I have discussed in, in another video, gives the Rogue and others some really exciting combo options and, and tactical abilities. As we discussed, like short sword with the knife, you're like hitting, getting advantage on the next attack, lining up your sneak attack, yeah. stuff like that. Glorious. Yeah. Uh, but in addition to that, the other biggie in the Rogue is a brand new feature called Cunning Strike. Yeah. This ended up being a hit in the Unearthed Arcana series. And what Cunning Strike really boils down to is it gives the Rogue the ability, starting at fifth level, to trade sneak attack damage dice for other effects. Yeah. Because we realized the sneak attack bucket of dice, it gets awfully big. Yes. And sometimes the rogue doesn't need all of those dice just to deal damage. So <laughs> the light bulb that went off for us in our, in our design process with the rogue was, well, what if we let the rogue do other things with those dice? Because my goodness, are there a lot of them. Uh, and so Cunning Strike was then born. Cunning Strike really is an answer to what if the rogue could do other things with those dice. And so at the start, what the rogue can do is can trade sneak attack dice to do things like poison their target, trip their target, withdraw from melee uh, without provoking opportunity attacks, that sort of thing. Then at higher level, you get even more Now, correct me if I'm wrong, which I know you guys will. You tend to do that a lot, which I greatly appreciate. Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. But I don't think I'm wrong on this one. Didn't... Don't rogues already have the disengage bonus action? So they could already get out of combat without attack of opportunity? A player's handbook doesn't matter i i like the <clears throat> regardless i do like the idea of being able to trade some of your damage dice for other effects um and in some instances especially if you're like fighting something that you're not trying to kill uh the the fastest way is to you know knock them prone um Poison, cool, whatever. It sounds like there's going to be more, and I stopped him too early. the The premise of Cutting Strike is is really, really cool. Um, I do see it seeing some use, but most people just want the bucket of dice to do damage. Um, or at least from my personal experience, that's what people would prefer. So. I like it. I do. I don't think it's uh, anything negative towards the rogue because it's not forcing you to, to do that instead of damage dice. You get to choose. So it's definitely not a negative. It's something that will definitely see some use. Some aspects of it definitely more than other aspects of it. But I like it. Options, And then you also gain the ability to pile on multiple options to the same sneak attack. And so it is all about giving the rogue ways to do more than just bucket loads of damage. 
without taking away the ability to do bucket loads of damage, because sometimes the rogue will still want to just take all their sneak attack dice and apply all of it to damage. But in those cases where it would be more helpful for you to poison the target, knock them down, withdraw, or knock them down, knock them out harmlessly, because at higher level the rogue also has even the option to just knock but them out lethal, and like I said. not deal uh, enough damage to actually slay them. Yeah, you don't need to assassinate every NPC you meet. Well, exactly. You, uh, mm, in addition yeah, to adding Cunning Strike to the Rogue's kit, uh, we've also... Hang on a second. This is my first time seeing the alternate art for, for the Monster Manual or the Dungeon Master's Guide. Those are so cool. Are those actually the, the alternate arts for all three books? I, those, that's just really cool art. Doesn't matter. Sorry about that. Enhanced other features that were there. Uh, we took reliable talent and moved it to a lower level. Uh, we made it so that Thieves Can't now gives you an additional language in addition to uh, allowing you to use Thieves Can't. And we've also, at level three, added a brand new feature called Steady Aim. This debuted in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, it's now graduated to the core books. And this allows uh, the rogue to be steady and give themselves advantage on their next attack roll. A fact, let's put a pin in that, a fact we will return to when we get to the assassin. Yes. <laughs> and uh, the assassin is especially glad that steady aim is yeah. now in the book. Uh, we also even enhance Slippery Mind at higher level, which used to just give you proficiency in wisdom saves. It now gives you proficiency in both wisdom and charisma saves. Okay. Uh, and the reason why that's relevant is it means now rogues will be harder to banish <laughs> since, <laughs> since most spells and other effects that uh, forcefully teleport people away or banish them uh, involve charisma saving throws. Oh, interesting. And uh, we wanted Neat. rogues to have all around slippery minds and to, to really lean into a th the theme that not only are rogues really good at stealth, devastating single strikes with sneak attack, but they're also good at wiggling out of danger. Yeah. And a number of the rogue's abilities are all about wiggling out of either physical danger or uh, mental or magical danger. And all of that together really, I think, achieves that goal that we had of take this rogue that's beloved, that's working really well, and just crank up the volume a little bit. I love having extra things to do with sneak attack. I love turning that into a resource. Um, we've seen that kind of design element with a couple of things in this new player's handbook, but that is something I adore because you always wanted to have the ability to potentially poison a target, right? Or to knock out target. Even in the video games I, I grew up playing like Thief and Dishonored, like that's all very iconic for a Rogue to be able to do. So that that's super exciting. Yeah, and again, just as with Weapon Mastery, it is something that we have loved playing with in our playtest games. And again, you have Weapon Mastery to play with too now yes. as a rogue. A rogue does not have as many masteries to play with as, say, the fighter, but still enough for it to make a difference. Yeah. And uh, it gives the rogue some really interesting tactical mini games when, especially once Cunning Strike is in the mix yeah. to figure out each turn. It's like, okay, what am I gonna do with my weapon? What am I gonna do with my sneak attack? Uh, a lot of fun. Then contributing to the rogue's enhanced profile yeah. are the four subclasses. Here we now, fucking go. the rogue has its two classic subclasses, the assassin and the thief, and those are two archetypes in the rogue that go all the way back to first edition. D &D. Yeah, well, and yeah. it's all about really: do you want to emphasize the killing part of, <laughs> of the rogue's identity, <laughs> or do you want to emphasize the uh, infiltrator and treasure hunter side of the rogue's identity? Right. Uh, with the thief representing infiltration and 
uh, treasure hunting. And then the other two subclasses that are available, just as in the fighter, we have the Eldritch Knight and the Psy Warrior taking the baseline class and mixing it with stuff outside the class. We have the same thing with the Arcane Trickster and the Soul Knife in the Rogue, where you can take the baseline Rogue and mix it either with spell casting in the Arcane Trickster or mix it with psionic power in the Soul Knife. Nice. Uh, shall we start with the assassin? Yes, or? let's start with the assassin. My first character was an assassin. So yeah. I've spent time with this subclass. So the assassin is long been a very popular archetype, but the 2014 version of the subclass struggled. All right, so fun fact, my first character was also an assassin. Um, and at the time, this was shortly after the, the 2014 Player's Handbook came out. Um, and at the time, there's a lot of people saying that the the assassin subclass, that rogues in general were were bad and not worth playing. And um, <laughs> with if you, I learned real quick, um, if you have a bow, a short bow, or a long bow, it doesn't really matter. If you, if you have a bow and you stealth into an area, so the enemy doesn't know you're there, that's an automatic sneak attack, right? We already know that. But you also have the hide bonus action. If you roll high enough, you can potentially have a um, Elder Scrolls moment um, where you lose an arrow and you go to hide. It hits them. They start looking around. You roll high, high enough to hide. They look around. They look around. Huh. Guess it was just the wind. You can do it again and again. Now... Keep in mind, not every DM is willing to do that. Um, and it's not like, oh, it was just a wind. Oh, I guess it was nothing. They know that they've got an arrow sticking out of them. They're going to continue looking around. But they'll turn around and you can take another shot and attempt to hide again. Um, my record is three arrows before I finally couldn't roll high enough to hide. Because every attack, the, the DC got a little bit higher. Um, but three sneak attacks before getting caught, the, the person was basically dead. It was, it was supposed to be like a, a big boss fight for the area. Um, and it turned into something comical. Um, <laughs> but uh, moral of the story is the assassin rogue has always been kind of incredibly broken, uh, <laughs> in a fun way. Um, so... Hopefully they didn't change anything too negatively here. Um, there were some things that probably should have been changed, but we'll, you know, let, let's hear them out. In actual play, uh, too much of its core identity relied on surprising uh, the other yeah. the other combatants uh, in, yeah, a, in a battle, and that could be quite challenging to pull off. And since we've changed the surprise rules in the new player's handbook, we didn't want to have anything in the assassin that, of course, relied on that anymore. We wanted to, at the baseline, for the assassin's abilities to be more reliable so that you could feel like your subclass was actually doing something. And so with that in mind, uh, we redesigned the assassinate feature First off, it gives the assassin advantage on initiative rolls. This, for us, was something we planned on doing for a yep. long time once we revised it. the assassin, because we felt that the assassin should have a better chance of going first uh, than, than most other combatants. Uh, because, of course, to do their job of assassination, getting the jump on others is yeah. a critical part of that. Makes sense. Now, what we also did is we made it so that the extra damage that they can deal in the first round of combat is no longer reliant on someone being surprised, but instead simply reliant on the other person not having acted yet. So, and okay. so the, the two parts of assassinate work together. We gave advantage on initiative roles so that the assassin is more likely to go sooner and going sooner means they have more potential targets to use their assassinate on because the, the requirement to use it is simply that the, the target has not acted yet. 
uh, in, in the combat. And we have found that in playtesting, <clears throat> this has achieved the goal of making the assassin actually able to use their core shtick uh, reliably in most battles, unless the D20 is just totally cruel to them. Right. Uh, we also uh, made a number of other enhancements, uh, simple ones like in Assassin's Tools. We now not only give you the proficiencies that we gave you before, but now we also give you the tools themselves. Uh, we were chuckling when we realized that a decade ago we gave you these proficiencies. And nothing uh, to use and them with. And then we're like, well, and good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now you actually get a disguise kit and a poisoner's kit when when you reach uh, the level where you get uh, these proficiencies. Uh, we've also then, and this goes back to steady aim that we were talking about before, we've completely redesigned infiltration expertise so that it it still includes some of the mimicry that the assassin was capable of before uh, to make it easier for them to socially infiltrate uh, certain uh, places where they might be hunting uh, someone or something down. But we've also now made it so that they can use steady aim on the move. Most rogues, okay. when they use steady aim, can't move for the rest of the turn because they are standing still as they line up an attack. Right, they're steadying themselves. The assassin, who, you know, in the narrative you can often imagine would be in a sticky situation where... Yeah they might need to be moving John Wick style uh, as, they, okay. as uh, they are battling people. We wanted them to be able to line up their shots even while they're running across the room. Right. Uh, and to me, this is actually one of the most cool things in, in the Assassin, just from a sort of cinematic standpoint, right. yeah. is, is imagining them doing this. Uh, we have also replaced the imposter feature that they used to have and given them a brand new feature called Envenom Weapons, which ties into the new Cunning Strike feature in the Baseline Rogue, uh, which allows them to deal more damage and ignore poison resistance when they use the poison option of Cunning Strike. We wanted assassins to be the best at using the new poison option that all rogues have access to. Uh, and then finally, uh, Death Strike no longer relies on surprise. Uh, instead, you just have to sneak attack somebody in the first round of combat, and you can potentially have your Death Strike. There you um, go. So we did Assassin, so... Arcane Trickster? Yeah, Arcane Trickster is it's, it's perfect. It's always been perfect. This is a hard oh. one to improve upon. Well, oh. and the Arcane Trickster, because oh. it was so solid oh. and so fun... It, other than just getting some tweaks to f integrate seamlessly into uh, the rest of the player's handbook, really only got uh, a few modifications uh, and one bit of actual redesign. So first, on the front of just some nice enhancements, the Arcane Trickster's spellcasting ability no longer has any School of Magic restrictions. Uh, and like the Eldritch Knight, who can now use an arcane focus, the arcane trickster can now use uh, an arcane focus. And the arcane trickster continues to be the awesome spell-wielding rogue who can use Mage Hand for endless shenanigans. Uh, and we then allow even more shenanigans with a new, uh, r new version of Versatile Trickster which we've redesigned to now interact with Cunning Strike in the baseline rogue. And just as the assassin is now really good at using the poison option right. in Cunning Strike, the arcane trickster is really good at using the trip Cunning Strike because now when you as the rogue trip someone, you can also have your mage hand trip somebody else. Oh. <laughs> and, and so you can imagine everyone's distracted by the rogue doing something, and then over there the mage hand is going whoop, and then someone else tumbles down. Uh, so you will be able to get up to even more silliness as an arcane trickster. Uh, I have always loved this subclass for truly delivering what's in its name, being a trickster. Uh, because there is so much prankishness 
in this subclass. I thieve a lot as Hurricane Trickster. It is a very, very fun sub. So, I'm sure you guys heard me groaning when they started talking about it. In my personal opinion, the Arcane Trickster was a super boring class. Um, it brought unnecessary magic into into the rogue class. That it, it wasn't necessary, and I tried playing it a couple times, and I just got real bored real fast. Now that is obviously my personal bias. Um, I don't think I've met anyone who's ever hyped up the Arcane Trickster subclass. I'm sure there are people out there that love it, and I mean, they had to have gotten their knowledge, their information on it being, you know, the super fun class from somewhere. Um, so I'm sure it's a fairly popular class. Uh, in my personal opinion, it was boring. However, I do like that you can now trip people with your mage hand. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, being able to, to have a spell focus is cool. Um, I know not every DM is like me where I hate uh, spell components um, because they're dumb. This is a hill I will die on, like I said before. Uh, if you if you open up your player's handbook or you're like me, I use an app for all the spells. Um, and you look at the spell components, they are a joke, literally. Um, but I think it's cool. Um, I... I'm sure my table will see some more arcane tricksters than what I've seen in the past, and I'm I'm here for it. I am. Um, don't come <laughs> don't come at me for my personal bias on that one. It's just it's just been boring to me personally, and I'm sure some of you guys have enjoyed it in the past, and I'm sure you'll continue to enjoy it, and that's fantastic. So far, I haven't seen anything worth complaining about. Um. For this class, for the, the the minute changes they've made to this class, so a lot of people are, have been complaining on Reddit about it being not playable anymore, and I'm not seeing why. So uh, I don't know. Let's let's move on, I guess. Subclass also really great at infiltration, at triggering traps without dying. <laughs> like there's is one of those perfect meshes of a, of a rogue, adding magic to a rogue to just get by a little bit better. And it sounds like a small thing, but in both of the Eldritch Knight and the Arcane Trickster, us removing the school of magic restrictions in each of them <laughs> is itself a big change because it means you will be able to uh, build a mix of abilities that you could never build in the past uh, because the school of magic restrictions in the past really kind of hedged you in yeah. in the type of arcane trickster you can build and, and now you have way more options. Perfect. The other rogue subclass that is mixing in supernatural power with the rogue's baseline abilities is the soul knife. For me, one of the things that I enjoy about the Arcane Trickster and the Soul Knife is they're not only siblings to each other as the two rogue subclasses that mix roguishness with supernatural ability, but they are also siblings to the other two subclasses in that the Arcane Trickster is basically the magical equivalent of the thief mm -hmm. and the Soul Knife is the supernatural equivalent of the assassin. Yeah. And the soul knife manifests this psychic blade and uses it to terrifyingly <laughs> attack people and leave no trace. That's the creepiest bit, yeah. And the soul knife appeared originally in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, it will feel much the same here, but it has enhanced presentation. It's now been fully integrated into uh, the rule set of the new player's handbook. But we also made a couple of critical functional changes to uh, the use of the soul knife itself because I'm the, guessing what these are now. So, and they're 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 just like in the arcane trickster. It goes a long way us lifting the school of magic restriction in terms of how the subclass will feel. The soul knife has two important changes to the psychic blades. One of them 
is you can now use them on your opportunity attacks. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this is probably the most requested yes. feature for the Soul Knife. <laughs> is being able to use the, the psychic blades for opportunity attacks, yeah. and now you can. Thank you. The other, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> the, <clears throat> the other cool thing that we've done for the psychic blades is we've given them a mastery property. We wanted the soul knife to feel like they were still getting to use the fun of the mastery system, even when using their psychic blades. And so the psychic blades have the Vex mastery property, which is the property that sets up your next attack to have advantage. Meaning, if the soul knife is using their ability to make a, a, an attack with their action and then a second one with their bonus action, that bonus action attack can now have advantage thanks to the vex of their first attack. Yeah, so you, you are setting up your sneak attack very well and you've got this extra weapon mastery. Yes, so next up, the thief. So, the Soul Knife is the uh, magical rogue that all of my players have always preferred. Um, I I've never played a Soul Knife before. Um, it always seemed fun, but by the time that came out, I was already the Forever DM. Um, I haven't been a player, and, and rogues are kind of not used a lot for NPCs, um, for obvious reasons um so i've never really fully understood the allure of the soul knife but with the changes they have made it sounds super fun um and i i can understand why people played it so much so but that was at my table at least that was the the magical version of the rogue that that i i've noticed saw play that people legitimately enjoyed um in comparison to the arcane trickster but like i said i'm sure there's plenty of people out there that that love the arcane trickster uh and will love it even more now uh let's talk about the thief so the thief has a number of fun enhancements as well as redesigns within it our goal here was to just make the thief even more thiefy um so one of the things that we did is in the fast hands feature we've given the thief the ability to activate magic items as a bonus action previously fast hands did not apply to magic items and now it does Good. and so the thief will be able to take a magic item yeah. that requires a magic action for activation and be thanks to fast hands now activated as a bonus action. Good. Perfect. We've also made it so that uh, in second story work, the thief can now use their dexterity instead of their strength when determining their jump distance. Good. And it now gives them a climb speed. It technically gave them a climb speed before, but did not call it a climb speed. Oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah. so now, now it loops through the regular climb speed rules. Right. Okay. Uh, we've also given you a new cunning strike option in Supreme Sneak at level nine, uh, mm. which now allows you to make an attack while you're hidden and stay hidden. Oh, it's nasty stuff. Fancy. And then finally, Fancy. in Use Magic Device, we've given the thief the ability to attune to up to four magic items instead of just the three that most characters are limited to. Uh, it also gives the thief a chance of using a magic item that has charges in it, of not actually expending any charges when using the item, and we've also provided guidance on how the thief can use spell scrolls that they wouldn't normally be able to use. And so they are, they're really great at kind of cheating <laughs> a, number, right, yeah. a number of the rules in the game. And that's the rogue. It is a gloriously stealthy class. So I like the changes uh, that they made to the thief subclass. I do, they just don't really, in my opinion, they don't seem to like mesh very well for the thief, like the the supreme stealth. Uh, that seems more like an assassination subclass uh, feat, in my opinion. 
uh, because the whole point of assassinating somebody is, you know, attacking from the shadows and staying in the shadows. Um, <clears throat> if you kill somebody, if you assassinate somebody and somebody else in the room sees you, you're not a very good assassin, you know? Um, so that definitely seems more like an assassination one, but, but fine, the thieves can have it. Um, what doesn't make sense is the non-magical subclass gets a fourth uh, attunable item. Uh, the, the ability to use a fourth attunable magic item. Um, or they can use the, the spell scrolls that they otherwise wouldn't be able to. Like, I get it that these are supposed to be these assholes that are great at cheating and whatnot. Um, but when I think a cheating thief, I think sleight of hands, cheating at the card games, cheating at the dice rolls, you know, um, cheating on a, a, a coin flip, not, oh, I'm not magical, but all of a sudden I can use magic better than my, my magical counterparts, right? The, the arcane trickster or the soul knife should, you know, their, their shtick is magic. And yet they're less magical when it comes to items, at least, than thieves. And that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, not that any of this is negative per se. It's just odd. It's weird to me. Um, I, I get it. They didn't really know what to do with the with the thief subclass uh, in, in way of changes. But, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below about that stuff. It's just, but yeah, to me, it just it feels like it doesn't belong with the Thief subclass. Um, but that's the Rogue. Uh, overall, it, it seems like they really listen to the player base for once. Um, we, we all know WotC is really bad at listening to, to, their, to their customers, to their player base in, in anything. Um, whether it's Dungeons & Dragons or um, Magic the Gathering. They don't like to listen to us. And with, with this, it seems like they really did listen. They they took notes and they delivered. I don't understand why people on Reddit are complaining about, you know, the Rogue being unplayable. This seems leaps and bounds better than it was in the 2014 handbook. And it, it was really good in the 2014 player's handbook, in my opinion. It was the, I, once again, I'm biased. It's my second favorite class. But if you can think of a reason why it's unplayable or worse than it was before uh let's have a dialogue in the in the comments let's let's talk about it um i want to know other people's opinions on this because otherwise i'm just sitting here you know shouting into the into the void of my opinions you know um so yeah let me know how, what you think about the rogue class and, and let's talk about it uh anyways uh i I know I've been doing a lot of community posts lately, uh, polls. I wanted to say that the the story time for my first uh, campaign, it is coming. It's what it is. It's going to be my first 5th uh, edition campaign. Just because my very first campaign was 3.5. It was while I was in the military. I It was long enough ago, and there was so much other stuff going on in my life at the time that I'm having trouble remembering everything. Um and a lot of people don't play 3.5 anymore. So it's less relevant than my first 5th edition campaign. And it's going to be the first 5th edition campaign that I played as a player. Because um, I didn't start DMing until a few months after 5th um, edition came out. I have DMed 3.5. Uh, I've DMed 3.5. I've DMed 4th edition, which... Let's just pretend 4th edition doesn't exist. and But I primarily DM'd 5th uh, edition because it is it is the most relevant for the time. Um, but my, my first story time is going to be my first 5th edition campaign, which was me as a player. It is coming, I promise. Um, I've got a lot going on with my recording area. So it, it's taking some time, but I promise it is on its way. For those of you who are excited about that, for those of you who voted for story time, um, I'm hoping to start touching on some of the, the species choices for, for one D and D soon, but I do want to get through all of the, the classes first, um, which I think I'm mostly done with the classes. Um, but yeah, it's coming. Uh, we just had our first Q and a, which 
I had viewers, but y'all weren't talking to me. Um, there will be another Q and A eventually. I don't know when yet. Uh, where I'm going to be streaming a game. I'm gonna leave the the poll. I'm gonna start a new poll for that one. Um, I know I didn't give a whole lot of time before my my first Q and A to give you guys time to prep, but there's a lot of stuff on the horizon coming for for you guys in ways of my content. I promise there is. Um, just bear with me a little bit. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching.